What is up, Beaver Nation? Today we have such an exciting match for you. Today we have CC Blue versus Drexel as their as CCE's second game of this season. Their first just ending earlier today, and they had a con uh, a really good victory against their team against the opposition. And we're really excited for this matchup. What do you have to say about it, Andrea? Yeah. So talking a little bit more about this tournament, this is the Collegiate Cup. So we're going against some colleges here. So today we're going against Drexel. We won our first match. Um, um, against, I think, Utah University, 2-0. Um, um, we kind of swept them. And now we're going against Drexel. This is going to be a little hard of a, hard of a match as Drexel is uh, more of a top-tier team. Um, so I'm very excited to see what we have here for today. Um, by the way, I'm Andrea, and this is Ian casting for this match today. Um, yeah, it's going to be interesting as we're switching over from Overwatch 1 into Overwatch 2 now. So this is now going to be a 5v5. We have one less tank compared to Overwatch 1. So it's, it's going to be very crucial for this tank um, and for everyone to work together to make sure we get these kills. Um, anything for else to say? Yeah, I mean, you guys are really going to be in a treat here today. Uh, Overwatch 2 is such an amazing and chaotic game. It'll be really fun to watch and really fun to cast. Uh, we're both really excited for this. Uh, it's such a fast-paced game with a lot of things happening at the same time. We'll try and explain it the best we can to you so you can, I guess, understand it a little bit more. But we are extremely excited. This is really going to be a close match between CC, Blue, and Drexel here. Yeah, and a little bit more about this like 5v5 style. So like, again, we're gonna have one less tank. So most likely um, there's gonna be a lot more faster kills. So I'm gonna try to explain um, as fights are happening and what is going on. Like for people that don't really play Overwatch, I'll do my best to explain what I'm talking about, um, as well as like who the characters are playing, what is happening on the screen. Uh, right now we're in the lobby, we're getting ready for everyone to join, and we'll see what map they're gonna start out with. Yeah, so we're looking right now at the team compositions. Uh, they haven't got it fully set up, but we have a, we have a really stacked roster here this season. Uh, we've really changed over, um, and we've added new players. Uh, a lot of freshmen are on this team, and they're they're ready to show their stuff as their first year on CCE. And so far, they have been showing their stuff, both in scrims and the scrim series that happened earlier um, earlier this month. Uh, it just finished, and they're transitioning into Overwatch 2, although it's a little bit rough for every single team. CCE is really pulling ahead here with all the practice and effort that they've put in over the season, and we're really excited to, to see how this really shapes up as their first streamed match. Yeah, and a little bit about these players. You probably saw some of these players um, last semester, and such as like Rig Pig, um, Spiro was like two semesters ago, um, Java Chup, these players have been playing with us for a while now, and now we have some new players such as UEO, Neo, um, and these players have done so much work to provide for the team. Everyone's working together, um, comms are on point, and we'll, we'll see how this match goes. A little bit about like the who's playing what. So UEO is um, usually on the tank, um, the main tank role, as there's only one tank, there's not off tanks anymore. Um, Spiro's usually on the DPS, usually playing the Sombra, you'll see hacking away. Um, Neo's on the Lucio, Rig Pig is usually on the BAP, Ana, or Zen. Um, Java Chup is usually on the Sojourn, another DPS player, um, hopefully getting all those headshots today. Mercy's usually a Genji player. So we'll see all these characters today. A lot of these char characters are meta now, such as Sombra. So we'll probably see like around a Zarya, Sombra, um, Sojourn comp, or a Diva Sombra Genji comp, um, depending on the maps. Yeah, one player to really look out here for uh, throughout the match is Mercy. He's going to be playing a green ninja called Genji, who has a lot of kill potential. Um, what they do is they slash into the into the fights, they secure kills, and they really pop off. It's going to be really exciting if we get to uh, see him play today a lot. And I think the, the roster is really stacked here. I'm really excited for what's going to happen here. Um, looking at the the enemy team as well, they're just finishing getting set up here, uh, and then we should be getting into the match pretty soon. Um, 
I'm really, I'm really interested. Who do you think, uh, who do you think Yu Yo is going to be playing on the first match here? It looks like we are on Li Shang potentially, which is a really exciting first control point map. Yeah, so I've been seeing some of their scrims, and from my experience, what I've been seeing, they stick on the Zarya for their first pick. Usually they go a Zarya comp. Um, Zarya just provides so much frontline damage with the two bubbles that she gets instantaneously, either on her or um, on someone else. You could build charge up very fast, and the more charge you have, um, the more damage you do. So Yuio is very good at building up that charge and just popping off with those picks and building grav which grav is the ultimate um and just building grav very fast being able to execute that um so probably we're gonna see a zarya for a start if that does not work out we might see a switch to a diva um i haven't seen them play much else like maybe a sig but mainly zarya and divas to start out with um though two, those two tanks are right now very powerful in overwatch 2 as they could provi provide a lot of damage to the front line yeah i completely agree damage is such a big thing in this comp that we, we're looking like we're going to play here um it's going to be a little bit of a of a divey comp i think with a little bit of brawl mist in with it with the zarya especially um, if they go D.Va here, I believe that they would go more of a fast pace. You'll see the Genji come out. You'll see uh, Lucio coming out. And their goal is to really rush on the enemy team and get them flustered enough to really secure those kills and push the objective. Um, so, I, yeah, I'll say that in this game, um, there are objectives that need to be played. Um, if we are playing Lijong Tower, for example, it's a control point where the teams will need to uh, stand on a circle, basically, to capture it over time. And the first one to 100%, you know, wins that point. And it's first to two, yes. I think. Yes, this nice. tournament is first to two wins. So I guess that's like out of three. Um, so first to two wins. Um, we'll see how this game goes. It might be a close one. Um, yeah, um, we talked about a little bit about the goals of the map. Um, hopefully, we'll get into the map very shortly. It seems like everyone's into the lobby. Oh, we're entering the game. We are the entering game. the oh game. My goodness. Here we go. We are on Lijang Tower. This is really it. I'm really excited to see who we're playing here on Lijang Tower. We're on inside, um, as it's called. Um, this is a really close, really, really close map in, in terms of like close quarters. They're going to be fighting right on top of each other and it's going to be really fast and it's going to happen really quick. Fights are going to end or start and end within seconds. I'm really excited to, to see what we play here. All right, we're waiting for them to pick their heroes. Um, I'm expecting a Zarya because Zarya on this point with the close quarters can build charge very fast. Um, Exactly what I said, Zarya, we got the Sojourn, Spiro playing the Sojourn, Mercy playing the Genji, Neo playing the Lucio, and Rig Plague playing the Bap. So basically, they're gonna go into this room called White Room, um, and they're gonna try to do as much damage as in one corridor as they can. Oh. Uh, it is important to note, uh, sorry if, if it cut out for a second, but it is important to note, I did see right there that it was a, the only difference between the two comps is that Drexel had a Hanzo and we had a Genji. So they're going to be more of a, more of a, I guess, slower comp. They're waiting for those picks to really happen while we're going to be rushing in. And I'm sorry if you can't see the, the, the gameplay at the moment, but I, I think... I think with our Genji being close quarters, that we might have this slightest advantage here with the deflect because how close quarters it is. Genji has an ability called deflect that is able to deflect the bullets that are shot at him back at the enemy, which does a lot when it's really close quarters, definitely. Yep. Trying to get back into the game. Sorry for um, the malfunctions that are going on. Uh, we'll be back there shortly entering the game but just as Ian said like Genji is very crucial to this comp he can go in very quick he's like an assassin he's a ninja he goes in very fast gets a kill um, has this deflect that is able to avoid damage and do damage back to the team so being able to do that can help get on the team faster um, as well as um, make sure. Okay, we're in. <laughs> All right, we're in, and it looks like CCE is taking the, the most advantage of this point already. They have 22%. Grav already came out. 
and it looks like Mercy is going to get a pick on the back. They're just cleaning up here. It appears like the Genji needs to kill this Sojourn. And it looks like they need to cap the point back in their return. So CZ is winning this first point. It looks like they have 25% on the mark. Let's see what ultimates we have going on. We have we have the Sound Barrier, which is a big protection uh, to the entire team. We have Blade from Genji coming out really quickly. The enemy, uh, Drexel has Hanzo ult. So let's see how this shapes up. We have the ult advantage. How are we going to use it? Yeah, we're probably going to see the Genji Blade coming in very shortly. Um, hear it right now. We'll see if Mercy gets any picks. Mercy gets picked out, sadly. He was unable to get any advantages from using the blade. Um, but I'm really excited to see what we see here from Spiro. He goes down. Drexel is just, looks like they're cleaning this fight up. They take the point advantage. CC was able to get 50% on the point before it was taken back. It looks like Drexel is going to be taking this point back from CCE. How are they going to recover this? Yeah, so right now Drexel has three ults coming up to four. The grab is going to be a big one. Grab usually is a fight winning um, ultimate, which is um, the Zarya's ultimate, so the tank's ultimate. So we're probably going to see a grab come out. Um, very quickly and maybe a beat from Neo, but right now it's mainly having Drexel's ult to waste and then so we could get more ults for the next fight. It looks like Drexel used their ult advantage to really take take us over here. Uh, they were able to use their Graviton Surge, which pulled us all together, and they swept the fight from there. Uh, CCE is returning on with their Graviton Surge as their Zarya is at, our Zarya is at 80%. Uh, UEO is going to be using this effectively. It looks like both windows from both teams are out, and it looks like uh, because of the Soldier and ult, Drexel is going to be taking this one, uh, this fight, as their win. What a really two good kills here from from the soldier and using the effective window to deal more damage in their ultimate. Yeah, so Drexel's comp with the Hanzo Sojourn, um, they want to play pokey, so they want to make sure they have space and they want to make sure they use ults with that space. But our comp, we want to go in fast and go on someone. So we pop the beat, we're going in, we're going right on top of them and we're getting all these kills. That's exactly what we want to do. The Graviton Surge came out there with the beat as the first engagement tool. It looks like CCE has used the three ultimates in order to win the fight. They really they really put their ults to use there, I saw. And it looks like with 95% on Drexel, all they need to do is win one last fight. And this might be the last fight to take it for either side. Yeah, so right now we don't have any ults. We're coming up with a, um, a blade. Um, however, Drexel has beat. They pop the beat, hoping to go on the target. Um, we see Mercy trying to get, kill this Hanzo, popping the blade. Um, Drexel put down an Immor, which prevents all damage done. So Mercy's not allowed to get any kills right now. Mercy really? Yeah, really, sorry, really unfortunate for Mercy there, but this is the last fight, most likely this is going to be happening. Ultimates are being popped left and right. Hanzo's ultimate of dragons just came out. Looks like Mercy gets the pick first, and Neil going down, Mercy going down as well. Uh, Rig pick getting a pick. It's two. It's 3v3 right now on the point. Whoever is able to capture this point will most likely win it. And yu -Oh gets the pick on the Hanzo. It's a 2v3 situation for CCE Blue. So CCE has one more fight. Both teams have one more fight to win. This is a very close round. Both teams also don't have many ults. We're both going up to a grab, which could be the fight winning ult. Um, ultimate shot has 75%. UEO has 65%. We got to build this grab very fast. Mercy sadly gets picked off the bat, but Spiro comes back with a pick of his own, only to get picked back with a headshot. Oh my gosh, this is so exciting. The window comes out from Drexel's side to deal more damage into the fight, as they have a really good position here. Will CC be able to come back and contest this point again? The grab comes out from Drexel's side. Uh, yu -Oh building his grab, just about to get it himself. Looks like he shoots it out and is able to get two picks. It is, a, it is a 3v3 situation on the point. Mercy getting the pick with a headshot. Needs to kill this Echo. This Echo and Echo and Bap are the last ones on the point, but it is, looks like it is a clenched victory for Drexel's side. What a close match. Yeah, that was very close. As I'm expecting, this, these games are going to be very, very close. Um, Yu-Gi-Oh! did get that grab off, got two kills from it, but it was just not enough. However, Mercy and Spiro coming back, trying to get those kills, um, but Drexel just had control of the point and was able to capitalize on that. Um, so right now, we're going to the garden. Wait, is this gardens? I actually am not too sure. <laughs> I, I really don't know the map names for, for Li Zhang. It's a little confusing, but that's all right. We should know the map names. We, we are We're... players, mm -hmm. but I guess I don't. Um, so we're on the next map. 
we're gonna see the Zarya again, same comps, but on Drexel's side, we're seeing the Pharah. So we gotta make sure we either play inside so the Pharah doesn't get any damage, or we pick up the Pharah very quickly. Yeah, Pharah's a really good pick here as she's able to duck in and out of cover with dealing a lot of damage, although Mercy might be able to get the kill on her, looking for the kill, unable to sponge it. And it looks like we have traded one for one. Uh, Mercy getting a pick on the Zarya. Uh, optimalist and it looks like Mercy gets picked on his own so it is currently a 4v it's a 3v3 situation now as as a uh, Spiro is able to get a pick back onto the Farah the big damage dealer of this comp yeah so right now Drexel has the point so they're in an advantage um, with the point um, we see Rick pig trying to go in get those kills um, Champlain is pushing up, trying to get these kills. We're going on the Zarya, which is a very vital pick um, if we get her. Sadly, um, Drexel got those picks first, and it's going to look like we're going to reset here, um, so build some ultimates, and go for the next, uh, go for the next fight. 100%. Let's look at the ultimate usage we have on the board. It's mostly a good 50% 50, 50 across every player. It looks like Drexel's Baptiste Peanut is going to get his, his window out early to deal more damage onto CCE Blue as they try and rotate on the point to try and get it back as Drexel is currently owning the point with 40% on it. Yeah, so right now we're just looking at just like in between fights, trying to get some poke, trying to get some damage to build. We see the window come out from Drexel. Um, the Immor goes down. We got pick, it's 4v4 now from the Mercy dying, but also the Pharah dying with it. Peanut going down, and we're seeing a 4v3 um, looking for advantage on Champlain's side. What an interesting uh, little interaction we had there as Mercy killed the Farah, but also the or, er, er, sorry, the Farah killed Mercy and Mercy died to the Farah as well. It looks like Rick Pig and, and Spiro are gonna clean up this fight for CCE Blue, capturing it back with 70% on the, on the percentage for Drexel here. CCE now in capture of the point. What are they gonna do next? Let's, let's look at the ultimates. We have UEO with his Graviton Surge, Spiro with um, his ability to basically one-shot any target really quickly. And the grab comes out from Drexel, and it is really big. They use the Fire Ultimate, and the B is coming out from both sides of the teams. It looks like the Fire Ultimate is going to get the value it needs, but CCE is able to recover and punch back harder. Yeah, we used a lot of ults there, but it was worth it, because if Drexel gets the cap one more time, they can win. That's one more fight, um, only one fight that they have to win after that. So we're able to hold this point. However, we used every single ultimate. We only have Window coming out. However, Drexel also used every single ultimate, only has Sojourn ult and coming to a Window. So we see a Sojourn ult popping up. Um, basically, what her ult does is if you click ahead, um, they die. So <laughs> it builds up her her charge very quickly. So we see the hundred of the team. That means she could headshot. It doesn't look like she could find anything at this point. Farah has a really good angle on CCE Blue. Will she be able to capitalize on this really good position, or will CCE Blue be pushing into the enemy team like they, it looks like they're doing right now? Spiro gets picked out, but the Mercy killing the Farah mid air. What an what an exciting kill from the Mercy here. Uh, it looks like Immor is down. Yuyo is able to get a pick on Peanut. Pest Control, head, it looks like she body shot Mercy, getting him out of the fight. It looks like CC are really struggling to, to clean up this fight, but it looks like actually Spear was able to get the kills that he needs to in order to clench this uh, this point out for CCE Blue. And as Drexel is trying to uh, reset for the next fight, it might not be enough time as it's 90%, which is not a lot of time for Drexel to come back and re-engage in this fight. It's 5% remaining. Uh, what is going to happen? They have to push in. Are they even going to be able to touch the point with 1% out? And it is a one-to-one -one for CCE and Drexel. That, wow, that was really exciting. We're going to the last and third point for Lijian Tower. This that was that was a really close match as well. Yeah, no, these matches are definitely going to be very close. Going to the third point. Um, Maybe this one's Gardens, I don't know. <laughs> but we're going to this point and it has a bridge on both sides. So these points are, are sy symmetrical on both sides to give an even fair chance for the middle control point. Um, we got this bridge. We might be able to see some Lucio boops from both sides, hopefully from Champlain's side. We could see a boop or two. Uh, I know Neo's 
Neo usually does the rollout for it. Um, definitely watch him. <laughs> so it looks like Drexel will start off with the Symmetra just for the TP onto point, or just for the TP out of spawn to get there first before CCE. CCE is swapping Spiro over to the Sombra. Sombra basically hacks a target, and once they're hacked, they cannot use their abilities for one second and also get more damage dealt to them. Yo gets picked off right off the bat, pushing a little too far up as Spiro also gets his pick, and Mercy is able to pick the back line out. They have no healers on the side of Drexel. The I think that it's just clean up at this point for CCE Blue. But how are they going to take this? The, the Mercy is going for the 1v1 with the Fire midair, having a little bit of a tough time because it's a really tough engagement to take. The Fire getting really low, but picking Mercy down. Yeah, so Far on this map has a more of an advantage than the last map. Um, she's able, to, she, it's in the sky, so she's able to just fly up around the building and just have free range on the point. So we need to make sure we play inside or we just go very fast into the enemy team and ignore the Fara. Yeah, definitely. Looks like Spiros unluckily got picked off right off the bat. It's really difficult to play as Sombra as, as you need to be pushing into the back line of the enemy team to get your, your really effectiveness out. And that is obviously the most dangerous place to be in the entire game. And it looks like CCE are going to are gonna regroup together as they're going to push on this point. Drexel owning the point at 30% right now. And they're just looking for picks off this bat. Spiro swapping over to the Tracer to try and deal with the back line a little bit more. Looking like he's almost going to kill the fire. Will he be able to clench that? Yes! They get two picks on the side of CCE Blue as they're just looking to clean up this last fight and take the point back. The point is now in CCE Blue favors. And it looks like they were just cleaning up this last one, getting a little boop from Neo off of the off of the ledge from the Sojourn. Yeah, so that fight, no one used any ultimates. So this next fight is going to be very important uh, with ultimate usage. If we use ultimates, we have to win um, because both teams have almost all five of their ultimates. Um, we're probably going to see a window come out first from Rig Pig and then a follow-up grab from UEO. Um, similar with what's going on with Drexel. We see the window pop from both sides. Um, their Pharaoh gets two, we get one. We're, we're down two right now. Um, it seems like this is going to be a cleanup from Drexel and we're going to use a blade for next fight. Drexel was able to use their ultimates to their advantage here to really push the point as both sides used window, but Drexel used the Farah Barrage to really get that damage in and was able to get two picks off before dying himself, which really changed the fight. It looks like the, the CCE Blue has the ult advantage here with their four ultimates versus Drexel's three. Let's see how they use it to their advantage to push this last point in as it's an even 60% to 40% Drexel's side. The graph comes out from both sides right now, and it looks like no picks are happening, but Mercy uses the blade in order to clinch more kills out of it. Really popping off here, as, as I said he would do. And he's really getting those kills. And it looks like it was a CCE Blue cleanup for this fight as they use their ultimates for a more better advantage to win it. Yeah, so both teams used both of their ultimates, but CCE came out on top. So um, next, next fight, we're probably going to see a window build up as well as another barrage from Drexel. Um, and we'll see a Sojourn ult from Drexel. Um, this ult really needs to get picks or they might... We got one pick on Spiro, which we'll see if we get more. Got two. Sadly, this is going to be clean up for Drexel now. And it's oh, a looks very like a pause close... might be happening as oh. Spiro accidentally disconnected from the game. Um, that is unlucky, but it doesn't look like it would have changed the, the effect of the match. This is extremely close. As you can see, it's 80% to 77% here for CCE Blue and Drexel. Whoever is going to win this last fight will most likely win the game as the other team will not be able to touch the point to, to recontest it here. This is an extremely exciting third point match. Whoever wins this wins the first match out of the possible three here. Yeah, 77 to 79%. That is extremely close. Um, that's maybe one more fight for both teams, one or two more fights. Um, we see on Drexel's side, we have the Far Barrage. We need to make sure we're monitoring that um, so Far does not get any kills. Um, other than that, Drexel maybe has a window coming up. Um, we need to build this window faster so we could just, you know, play slow, 
bait out their barrage, kill the Pharah, and then go in with this window and win that fight. Um, both teams don't have that much ult, so if CCE does win this fight, there is going to be another fight that might be able to contest point. So we need to watch out for that as well. Yeah, totally. Uh, it looks like it'll be a little bit tough for CCE to come back from this fight, especially with the disconnect. Unfortunately, uh, Neo also getting picked right before the pause happened. So they're going to have to wait a lot of seconds here, and which is a lot of costly time for CCE Blue. It looks like they will maybe touch at like 90 to 95% left for Drexel if they're if they have any chance of coming back here. Uh, sadly, with the disconnect, it also resets your ultimate usage. So that is really unfortunate for the CCE Blue side, but obviously does happen, especially with Overwatch 2 being such a new game as it came out just last week. Yep, exactly. Um, as we're waiting for Spiro to join, um, we're gonna, I'm going to talk more about this Zari comp and what's kind of going on um, and explain if anyone doesn't understand what I'm talking about, a um, little bit more what I am talking about. So if you see um, in the middle of the screen, the top middle is the percentages. So that's basically how much of the point you have capped. So on the right side in red is CCE and on the left side is Drexel. So we can see how close that is. And in the middle, you can see usually as they're capping a point, um, the progress of the cap it goes up. Um, so once you have the point, you get more percentages. And then on each side, you have um, all the heroes that are playing as well as their ultimate percentages. So that's the number by each hero. And underneath is their health, if anyone was questioning that also. So also, um, when we're talking about ultimates, we're usually looking at those percentages on top um, because usually if you have more ults, that's usually going to be a fight win in the end. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. I'm um, looking at both of the comps here for both teams, and it's really interesting, actually, to look at. Uh, it looks like Drexel, the only difference between Drexel and CCE are the DPS, or the damage per second heroes, who deal the most damage. It looks like they have the Farah, who really stays up in the air and deals a lot of damage from the air onto the ground, um, although they're easy to pick off if they're targeted properly. Um, they also have the Sojourn, who is a really good character in Overwatch 2, a new one that has actually, um, you know, teams don't have that much uh, usage with her and against her, so it's really exciting to see her in these kind of matches as she's such a, a pop-off character that's able to carry games just by herself. And we have, on our side, we have the Tracer from Spiro and the Genji from Mercy, as we've talked about earlier. Uh, the Genji from Mercy has been having his pop-off moments as we have known him for him to have, um, and it's been really exciting to watch so far. Um, so right now, it's just a, it's just seeing who can play the DPS better than each other and who can play the mirror matchups. We both have Lucio, we both have Baptiste, we both have Zarya. It's about who's the better player on their own heroes. Yeah, and talking more about the heroes, um, Sojourn, like we said, it's a new hero. That's so exciting. We're getting new heroes in Overwatch, um, as well as a lot of heroes from Overwatch 1 are different in Overwatch 2. So for Samba, for example, um, she used to hack and all the cooldowns were gone. You can't use any of the cooldowns for um, for a certain amount of time in Overwatch 1. And now you hack and it's only... I think like less than a second of you can't use your cooldowns and then it's Sombra is able to do d more damage to that target um, the rest of the time that someone is hacked. So there is a lot of differences in Overwatch 1 and Overwatch 2 that we might see. Um, the lack of CC and only having one take tank um, is able, um, people are able to get more picks with that. And these picks are going to take a little bit slower. However, the fights will be faster. Yeah, 100%. It looks like uh, Spiro's computer had to, to have a forced Windows update. You know how that happens, right? Um, it looks like he's just coming back right now. As it did say, he joined the game, uh, so he might be starting up in the next few minutes, per se. Hopefully, um, it's... It's this really going to be a close one. It's one to one. It's closer than I could have ever imagined, honestly. For the first point of the of the match, they are ready for CCE Blue. It looks like we're going to be starting up here in a few seconds. Here we see the R go on chat. Oh, but Drexel's not ready yet, so we got to wait a little bit more time, just a tad bit. Um, yeah, we'll we'll see how this goes. We have Drexel is on the point now. 
it's about to be capped. Um, CCE is in an advantage at 79%, but that's slowly gonna be taken up by Drexel being in the lead. And we're gonna see how we build these ultimates, how we use these, this window, how Drexel uses their barrage, which will might be a fight winning barrage if we cannot stop it. Definitely, yeah. And I also wanted to just clarify if uh, if the people at home didn't know, uh, when we're talking about Sojourn, we're talking about, if you see in the top left of your screen, we have pest control on Sojourn right now. Um, it's also in the kill feed in the top right. Um, so that's through the character that we're talking about. Um, Zarya has the pink hair. Um, Farah has her ultimate in the top left, as you can see. Um, Alicia is the green guy, I guess you could say. Um, and then Baptiste is the last one. Uh, this is, this is going to be really exciting as we should be starting up any second now. It looks like Drexel is just coming back from a bio break. Um, and we'll be starting up. I'm really excited to see how this first fight, or maybe even last fight, sorry, will actually occur um, for both sides. Oh, <clears throat> maybe starting soon. Yes, yeah, we, got we are it. going, we are <laughs> off. Uh, we apologize for the little delay, but we are getting right back into it as we should be starting any second now. So, so, so close. Maybe so. Almost there. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. All right. Uh, yeah, I'm really, let's see, look at the ultimate uses. Baptiste's ultimate uses for both teams are almost exactly the same. Same with the Lucios and with the DPS. Um, <laughs> Oh no! no. Oh goodness Not another gracious! One. <laughs> another one fell. We are so sorry. Someone from Drexel has sadly crashed. It looks like. Um, yeah, this happens with the new game. Uh, don't worry. Uh, it... <clears throat> yeah, you know we could even go for a break right now if you really want. If we really want to. Um, yeah. Oh, it's another Windows update. No. No. That, uh, Not that, no, Windows. Come on. We don't want to update to Windows 11. Dang. I don't facts. want that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I've been on Windows 11. It's not that bad. It's been all right. Uh, but yeah, it looks like uh, we could take a break if we want to. This update might take a few minutes. Um, yeah, why don't we throw it to a break? Yeah, we'll, we'll throw Let's it to go. a break. We'll be right back after this yeah, break. It should take five minutes. Maybe, hopefully. Hopefully only five minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll see how much Windows will oh, last. Oh, wait, hold on, oh, hold on. That Windows hold update up. was pretty fast. That was I'll pretty fast. So. I like to see it. We are looking like he just joined back in the game from Drexel's side. It looks like that was a quick update. Amazing update. Let's go. All right. <laughs> Uh, now we're asking if both teams are ready. It looks like both teams are ready, and we are Let's starting. Go. Yes, we are. Five <laughs> seconds, one second, and we are in for the last fight of Li Zhang Tower. Yeah, so we see Spiro go back on the tracer. Sadly, no ultimate charge. Um, and we're going to see CCE. Oh, now on the D.Va. So compared to Overwatch 1, we keep... 30% of the ultimate charge. So we re already see Yuyo on the on the Diva with 30%. We dive in, they get no no value out of the barrage because of the Diva matrix, which is amazing. We we should be able to finish up this fight. Um, but Drexel is on 99%. Peanut does get a, a kill. An ultimate shot does get another one. We're very close here. We need to stay on point here as it's just one more remaining. It looks like Spiro might get picked off, and that might be it for CCE Blue. And that is it. What a what a really close match for the first match of the game for both Drexel and CCE. Drexel takes the victory in the end with only, I think it was 19% left of a difference between the two teams overall. That was really close. And look, we're looking at the play of the game from Yu Yu here as Zarya with the Graviton Surge, I would assume. Yes, the Graviton Surge, that was that was the needed victory for them to take this second match. And what an amazing play of the game as it was just showing how powerful Zarya is in Overwatch 2 when she's at a high amount of charge. Yeah, so we're going to go into the next map. It looks like it might be Blizzard World here, which I have not seen being played. Oh, no. We're going to King's Row. Ignore what I was saying. We're going to King's Row. Um, Scrim's Row, as we call it. Um, and we're probably going to see another Zarya. Um, not really. We used to see a Rhine in Overwatch 1. It's kind of just shifted to Zarya, Zarya Diva. So we're probably going to see a very similar comp of what was being played previously. 
Yeah, I'm really interested about what the comps in. They looks like they're swapping out Mercy for Java, Java Chup, who is also a DPS member on CCE's side. I'm wondering who they're going to play. Will they play the May on defense for that wall? Um, I don't know. May has gotten a lot of changes throughout Overwatch 2's history, but I'm really excited for this. Uh, this push that is gonna happen. So this is a push. This is a hybrid map So what happens what needs to happen first is a team needs to the attacking team needs to capture the point And then once they capture a point They're then given a payload to bring to the end of the map and whatever team pushes the payload further or caps the first point more will win the match Yep, so we're gonna see a what is first is capping the point which is in the middle you'll see the percentage of capping and then we're going to see this payload come out and we're going to have to push this payload to the end of the map so looking at the comp here um we see a widow which is very in oh we're attacking okay that makes more sense yeah i was, yeah, I was a little worried as well yeah side. i was like wait a minute Hold that on. can't be right you want to describe why it's a widow yeah <laughs> yeah so widow is very powerful to try to just get a first pick widow is a sniper so she can headshot um headshot one shot um and she'll be probably appearing up in this top doorway and you could probably just try to get a pick if you don't you'll switch off and we are off on King's Row second match of the the total game here for CCE versus Drexel. Drexel getting the Lijiang Tower beforehand and looks like they're pushing in. Look how high Neo is going with the with the Lucio trying to distract the enemy team. It looks like the enemy team has the first Jeff Trap with the headshot on Peanut getting the first pick. It's such a uh, such a powerful pick to happen. He gets he gets killed right back, but it looks like CCE kills both of the Lucio and the Farah for Drexel's side. It looks like it's just finishing up the cleanup here. What a quick and fast attack for CCE's attack on, on King's Road. That headshot was flawless and was really needed to be able to push into this point. Yeah, that was that was very powerful from CCE. Um, just like that, one shot, one kill, um, you're able to just get all the kills easily. So getting one kill in this 5v5 setting is very important and could just win a fight. 100% here. It looks like the Zarya actually for Yu Yu is at 100 charge, which is really important. That'll be doing a lot of damage upcoming here as they start moving the payload after they frag cap after they capture the point. And it looks like the hacks are coming out from Spiro in the back line, trying to get any picks that happen. But Rick Pick gets picked off by Pest Control with the the Sojourn, as we talked about. It was, this time it was a body shot. Um, an extremely tough pick to happen for CCE as they get picked off again with the, with Neo uh, falling to the Genji of Verdizzi. Yeah, so we see Yuyo's grab coming up very fast on 96% compared to Optimal's 66%. So this is going to be a very important, it's going to be a fast grab fight, fast win hopefully. So we see the grab come out, it gets three, we're going to get these kills very perfect. Like this is exactly what we need to do to win fights like this. Rick Pig actually getting the triple kill during that Graviton Surge that might have resulted in a play of the game after this match finishes. We'll have to see if you can remember remember this play that just happened here. Um, that was a really quick uh, fight that just happened. It looks like for CCE's side, they had to use, or we had to use uh, two ultimates in order to win the fight, a Graviton Surge with the window. And, but it looks like Drexel has been, has been holding these ultimates up and they're ready to push it all into one fight here as they have every single ultimate on the board coming up for this next fight. Yeah, so we're probably going to see a Genji Blade come out from Drexel as well as um, a Sojourn or it looks like um, she gets two picks. We're, we're down two. We're hiding in this little room up here, trying to back off, trying to get one kill to turn this fight. It looks like it is just clean up here from the side of Drexel as CCE is unable to find any more pick. Actually, Rick Pig with the headshot on the Genji for Dizzy, although it won't matter in the long run as it looks like Drexel has been able to take that victory with only using one ultimate. That is so, so vital for the side of Drexel that they were able to finish that fight. Even though they had every ultimate, they only, were able, they only used one in order to win that fight as CCE is now coming up on three ultimates of their own with the Graviton Surge, maybe coming up this fight if they are able to use it at all. Yeah, we're going to try to see a hack come out from Spiro. We see Spiro sneakily going into the back line, um, getting ready to EMP. We see it come out. The blade on Drexel gets no one. However, Beef gets a kill on Spiro. Um, however, that is only one. We can turn this fight if we can. Javachov with a headshot on Beef. 
Jab Trap with the headshot on Beef. It looks like this fight is now a 3v4 inside of CCE. Uh, Rick Peak getting a pick on the Genji of Verdizzi. And we're just going to see what's going to happen here. It looks like it's just cleanup, but they're really pushing on Drexel's side as they're starting to, their teammates are starting to come back into this fight again. It looks like Spiro gets picked off. And it looks like the Zarya at 100 charge is really showing why Zarya is so important to be having that 100 charge and how much damage they can really output. As CCE looks like they were getting cleaned up after this fight. It looks like the ultimates that came out during that fight were Sound Barrier from Lucio, the Blade from Genji, and Gravit and Graviton Surge was a little earlier from the Zarya. And it looks like for the side of CCE, they have uh, just the Zarya Graviton Surge coming out here for the next fight. Yeah, but Grav is a very big ultimate to use. Um, so compared, comparing the ultimates, um, hopefully we'll win this fight with Grav. It'll be a clean, nice fight. Um, we see the grab come out on the on three of them. We get a kill on Beef. Um, about to get another kill on Zarya. Mercy, oh that's Spiro. That's not even that's yeah, not even Mercy. Spiro, Spiro on the Genji. We're not off. used to Yu Yu getting a triple kill. That Graviton Surge was absolutely massive and necessary for the victory of CCE in that fight. Looks like they're gonna cap the point. If you can see it right up the top here, it looks like they're gonna get that little diamond. They're gonna turn it from blue to red here, which means that they have a little better spawns to start pushing in even harder onto the side of Drexel. Uh, three minutes on the clock. That's well enough time to be able to get it. On the end of the end of the point, it looks like now Drexel has the advantage here as CC only has the ultimate of Sojourn coming up here. Looks like they're gonna use the Graviton Surge. CC has been captured into it, and it looks like it's just gonna be cleanup from here as Drexel was able to use the Graviton Surge really effectively, capturing both of the both of the uh, CCE's CCE players, and that fight ended up really quickly, and they only need to use one ultimate for that. Let's see what's going to happen next. Yeah, so we have two and a half minutes on the clock to cl um, to cap this last point. So right now, we're just looking to build these ultimates up and just use them to cap this last point. We see the window go out from Rig Pig to try to, um, try to make more space in between the teams. Um, we're going to probably see a blade come out from um, Drexel soon. Um, we see Java Chub popping um, the Sojourn ult, not getting any kills. Oh, gets one kill on Optimal Shot. Now we're able to push in with that one kill. We see a beat come out from Neo, um, able to sustain the team. Another kill from Java Chub. Um, we're seeing Spiro go, go in, trying to get more of these kills. Um, we're, we're about to cap this last point. We're stuffing the doorways. Um, this is very good fight from, from CCE and with a lot of time on the clock also. One minute, 40 seconds is a lot of time. It was an absolute massacre for CCE pushing into this final point. They really used their ultimates effectively in order to take the, the better advantage over Drexel here as they were constantly using counter ultimates to counter the ultimates of Drexel. Um, and it really blended together really well in order for the CCE to be able to push it to the end here. So we're now swapping sides with Drexel attacking and CCE defending with CCE having a minute and 40 on the clock left when overtime may or may not happen. So let's say that Drexel is able to push the cart all the way to the end, just like CCE did. Uh, CCE now has 1 minute and 40 to recapture it. As we're starting the, the defense section now, can we talk about the comps that our, both teams are playing? Yeah, so not to the surprise, we're playing the same comp. <laughs> um, we're, we're seeing the Zarya again. Zarya is just very powerful in the front lines as we see her getting kills, as we see her building that grab very quickly. Um, we have Java Chup on the Sojourn, able to get those one-shot headshots, um, and Spiro on the Genji to be able to dive targets and finish those tar targets off. So on defense, we're probably going to be playing this corner around this building or around statue. That's usually how teams play it. Um, however, the other team is playing the exact same comp, but with a Hanzo. So they're looking for more poke compared to our team. Yes, they're totally looking for the picks here. It's just one pick, as we saw on the side of CCE during the attack, will just determine the fight. As it looks like both teams are attacking from multiple different angles here. Um, CC on the defense side, building up the ultimates quickly in order to defend their point. Uh, well, it looks like Drexel is on the point already with the attack, putting out the Immor already, being taken out by Rick Pig. Um, that's a really useful ability that just came out from Drexel. As they're sitting on the point, what are they going to do next? 
I would get a kill on Spiro um, and a kill on our Immor. So we're very low right now. This is probably going to be a cleanup from Drexel as they took out our cooldowns and was able to capitalize on all the cooldowns that we used as a team. Just as fast as CCE attack took their point, Drexel takes it back on their own attack, being able to show how, how I guess, really good both teams are at this attack as Neo gets staggered, which means that he's going to have a much later spawn than the rest of his, his CCE team. Uh, right here, we're looking at the ultimates. What are both teams looking at right here? So right now, we're both looking at a window. So window usually builds pretty fast, and we're going to probably see a window placement from Peanut and Rig Pig very shortly within this fight, um, almost with 100%. Um, we're also looking at, at a Dragons from Drexel um, and building up the Sojourn ult. However, Java Chub did get picked off from Pest, um, so this leads out as a disadvantage for CCE going into this defense. Sojourn is such a volatile character, being able to get those picks so fast like that. As Rigpick gets picked, CCE is falling apart here without any ultimates to be able to, to be used here as, as pest control on the Sojourn, really showing their stuff, being able to pick off CCE as they're pushing into this last point. It looks like CCE are going to be able to contest this next point. As you can see up there on the top, the, the three moving over, it looks like CCE is going to be able to contest this last one one last time if they're able to hold this. Yeah, so we're gonna see the window pop out from Rig Pig. Um, we, however, we did get grabbed, so we might not even be able to touch the point. Um, Drexel does cap the second point, going on to the third. Drexel um, is saying, hey, we could go to the third point faster than you did. We'll see on the last point what CCE can do for defense. Um, this point is a lot harder to attack, so, um, hopefully, we'll see this defense be stronger compared to the other two points. Yeah, 100%. I wonder how CCE will be able to adapt to this last point push as they're starting to get their ultimates on. The grab goes out, pulling the Zarya in. The counter beat happens as everyone's ulting. Right now, uh, Spiro is able to get his blade off in a second as Jabba Trap is getting the picks that he needs to, getting the damage in as Rig Pig is just cleaning up with yu yo -Oh and Spiro. The entire CCE team use their ultimates there in order to capitalize on that fight as we used Java Trap's ultimate, we used yu yo -Oh's, and we used neo -Thay's. And we were able to really just capitalize on the enemy team with the better ultimate usage here. As it looks like the sound barrier for Drexel was able to come out. And although it wasn't able to do much for the side of Drexel in order in in uh, terms of protecting them. Yeah, we really needed that to have the momentum back in our team. We see Spiro popping the blade, getting one. Um, we're getting two, getting three. I'm about to kill the Sojourn. This is a very clean fight from CCE. Um, only using the blade, and we're building up back to a window, almost have a grab, 50% on grab. So taking these fights very fast and very quick allows CCE to build ultimates um, quicker as well. Yes, that was such a very vital win for CCE, only using one ultimate to clench the fight. Which ultimates will be used in this fight to to, to make a decisive victory for either side? Rick Pick gets a pick on Vir Viri Dizzy on the Hanzo, and it's looking like a 4v5 situation in terms of CCE, getting another pick from the Zarya, killing the Zarya on the other team. It is now a 3v5 in the favors of CCE without using a single ultimate, as both teams look like they are just going to be building their ultimates up in order to get ready for these next few fights. Three minutes on the clock for Drexel to be able to capture it on the third point. We see Grab go out as well as a window. Um, not much Drexel can do here. Grab makes you stuck and gets sucked into this little orb. So not much. Very clean fight again. We see a lot of these fights be taking very, very early. Um, we see Yu-Yo hiding in this little mega room, ready to push up and ready to get speed from the Lucio. Um, so we might see another quick fight. We have three minutes on the clock now, slowly burning down that time. Um, sadly, however, Peanut did get a pick off of, on Spiro, but we see yu -Oh going in, um, trying to get a pick, but not capitalizing on that. And we see Drexel using Sojourn's ult and getting the rest of the kills. Yes, it was only a matter of time before CCE's defense crumbled here from the ultimate usage that Drexel has been building up over these past three fights. Uh, CCE have really been using their ultimates effectively to to only use one ult per fight to in order, in order to be able to win it. But here we have uh, Spiro getting a pick on Verdizzi. 
that is such a vital pick. It looks like it's already pushing back Drexel. So they have to retreat in order to, uh, re you know, re reconsider um, uh, being able to push back again with their ultimates that they've been building up. It looks like they have four ultimates for this next fight. How are CC gonna gonna be able to, I guess, uh, go against this? Yeah, this is definitely gonna be hard um, with Drexel's ultimates. Um, CC can't really do much but save their ultimates until next fight and hopefully Drexel uses their ultimates. So we see a window come out from Drexel, we see a grab come out from Optimal and a Dragons as well. So that's three less ultimates we have to deal with. We have a grab on our side as well as a Blade and a Sojourn ult. With um, almost the same amount of time that I have I've, on both sides here, it looks like CC are going to be able to contest the point one last time as Spiro gets picked off. Java Chop in the corner, low HP gets picked off. It's not enough to be able to contest this point and win it for CCE as they're just trickling in at this point. Using the ultimates though, Yu Yo is able to get a huge grab on them, looking for any kills. Spiro gets the pick on the Lucio. That's such a vital pick if they're able to stall for the rest, but it, they, it looks like they are not able to. Java Chop getting a pick on the Verdizzi, but it is not enough. One minute 22 versus one minute 40. I, I could not have asked for a closer game. Yep, so right now CCE does have more time, one minute and 40 seconds compared to one minute and 22 seconds from Drexel. Um, we're gonna be on the, the fence, I think. I don't know how, I should know this. I feel like I should know this, um, but we'll see basically them play this whole map again but with less time so we're gonna be see cce coming out i think on the defense i could be wrong though yes on the defense so more time usually you get defense and then attackers get less time so with the same comp we're going to be seeing a very similar thing hopefully CCE has adapted and is able to take this defense better than what they did previously. 100%, and it is an 18 second difference between both teams here to be able to capture the point and push it as far as they can before they either get it to the end or have it taken over from them. 18 seconds might be the difference though between one entire fight. So CCE are going into this last push here with, the in with a slight advantage as they're on the defense side. Um, with Drexel on the attack. who are starting off in three, two, one, and Drexel is attacking with the Widowmaker. Will they get the pick? No, they swap immediately to the far, getting that really like air superiority here for the side of Drexel. They're pushing in here. How are they gonna take it from CCE? Yeah, so right now they just have to cover space and eight, um, um, cover space, So, but we see Rig Pig trying to get this pick on the Pharah. They understand that the Pharah um, can have a lot of detrimental with the damage. Pharah does a lot on direct hits. Uh, right now we're just playing around this building at each person trying to get picked both teams get one pick on each side it's even um cce has a slight advantage as peanut does not have in more we see java chub trying to get a pick however pest control gets a pick instead on spiro we're trading again very close fight very messy fight um but it seems like drexel is on top being able to capitalize this point and cap it yes even though those trades were happening from both sides it looks like cce were always on the back foot always needing to heal up always needing to recon uh, like reconvene with each other in order to heal up and get ready for the next push But it just wasn't enough as Drexel was able to push through with now It is going to overtime which means that if they get off the cart once CCE captures it and it is swapping sides again So CCE needs to win one fight here uh, In order to capture it back as it goes into overtime starting now yeah, so right now we don't have a Graviton, but we have a window coming up on CCE side. Uh, we just need to build these ultimates and hopefully we get one pick and we're able to just roll over the other picks. Right now we see the window coming out from Rig Pig, not able to get any picks. We see a window come out from Peanut, but however, Peanut dies. Um, it's very even right now. Um, advantage on CCE with one. CCE is trying to get the picks, however, is very low. A beat comes out from Drexel's side, able to stabilize a little bit longer and able to stall the point a little bit longer. We see a grab come out from Yuyo, and that should finish the fight here. What a convincing defense by CCE, being able to, to even though they gave up the first capture point, they were able to stop it immediately, right at the first choke point, right in Drexel's tracks. Um, how are How is CCE going to be able to push harder and push through this choke point that Drexel was unable to do. They need to be able to capture this point as fast as they did the first round 
and push through this choke using their ultimates that they may have built up over the fights. Yes. I'm, I'm really excited for this, yeah. Yeah, this is going to be a close one. Um, we got to make sure we cap this um, point fully as well as push it slightly towards the archways. Um, luckily, the archways should be an easy um, push to it. However, um, if we don't cap this point, I would say it's but it will be game over if we don't cap this point. So we have to cap this point, and I think that will be the hardest part of the push. Um, once we get the point, I think it should be a pretty easy push from there. 100%, and it looks like both teams are actually, if we are expecting the Java Chup to swap to the Sojourn after this uh, attempt of, at, a, at a first pick, it looks like both teams are actually in a perfect mirror uh, for the first time, which means that every single character, every single hero from both teams are the exact same, and it is the player that makes the difference now, 100%. And it looks like we're starting the attack now in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and it looks like... We're starting off with, the, actually, we dropped the Reaper for the side of for CCE with Spiro, who's a really up-close shotgunny character. He needs to get in your face and deliver deal all that damage. Yeah, this is going to be interesting. We want to get into them very fast. We're probably going to be using speed. We're going to ho into a hotel, actually. Never mind. Forget I said that. Um, we're using speed to get on top of them, so Spiro can do a lot of damage into the enemy team. Such a messy fight happening, but Spear was able to deal enough damage to take out the enemy Zarya as Rick Pig was taken down in the process. Yu Yu getting a pick. It is a cleanup for CCE. They have a minute left on the clock. They are able to, it looks like they're able just to just clean this up. They have a minute to push through this little choke point here. You see that little the little square? They have to push to there or through there in order to win at a CCE convincing victory. They have a minute to do so, which is about two fights approximately if they even if if they lose both of the fights. This is really heavily in the favor of CCE, but both teams are equal with ultimate charge. It looks like the Zarya on CCE side has a little bit more charge and might be able to actually get the Graviton Surge by the end of this 30 seconds that we have left in this match. This is very close. We're gonna see CCE trying to push up, trying to get those kills to clear the point as we only have 29 seconds left. A Java Chub with the pick on the bath that is ginormous because bath is a main healer and now, uh, now Drexel cannot heal. However, Drexel is getting picks off of CCE. This is very close, guys. This is extremely close. Only 13 um, seconds. CCE is backing up, trying to um, trying to regroup and able to go in for this last five seconds. CCE actually has the advantage here as it is a 5v4 for the last fight that's happening right here as it is overtime. They need to stay on the point. This has to be a convincing fight. He's going to get the Graviton Surge, I think. By the end of it, the blade comes out, though it is sweeping CCE. The sound barrier comes out, but it is not enough. The, the Genji blade from Drexel was able to take the advantage off of CCE and it looks like they're gonna make convinc they're gonna have this victory for the Drexel side so close and that was an amazing series from both teams here that could not have been closer that was that was so close I, I I'm just so <laughs> surprised on how close that was but Yu Yu gets the play of the game here uh, I think with that triple kill from the Graviton Surge yeah, we see yu -Oh with those grabs, just like the other one, being able to use the grab and getting all the kills that follow up with it. Um, that was a very close game, a very good game. Oh, oh, oh. it is best of five, maybe? Maybe? Oh? No, they said GG's, though. Not nah, best of three. So that is okay, going to be it. CCE was unable to take the victory for this match, even though it was an incredibly close one. It was one fight difference on both maps. Uh, you know, whatever team won that fight in the end was able to clinch the victory out, and it looks like Drexel were able to do that for both maps, both Lijong and Scrims Row. Yeah, very close map. Um, we'll hopefully be seeing more of CCE Blue in the future, having more close games and winning in the end. Um, we have a lot more games coming up within this uh, collegiate tournament. It's, it's not... Um, Wait, what am I trying to say? Don't worry, I know what I'm trying to say. Um, basically, CCE could play as many games as they want. I think it's 10 games, and then they go into, if they're top 15, they go into a single ELIM bracket. So we have more games coming up. CCE has more chances to win, and um, 
Sadly, CCE didn't come up at, on top this time, but I bet we're going to see C CCE come up on top next time. Yes, of course. And don't leave us right now. We are going to have an interview actually happening uh, right after this uh, little break that we're going to be ha coming up here. Um, that was such a close match. That was so exciting and invigorating to, to really watch as both teams on such an incredibly high level of play were able to have such a close match with one another. Uh, that was amazing. Um, congrats to Drexel for really uh, taking that victory in the end, and congrats to CCE for putting up such an amazing fight. Um, but yeah, it looks like we're going to be going to break here, unless we, uh, you have anything else to say, Andrea. No, I think I'm good. I'm wondering who we're interviewing, and stay tuned for that. Yeah, I'm excited. All right, let's throw it to a break. See ya.